Welcome back folks to the VIA pinstriping page. If you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching. So I got a special request from a subscriber, uh, my buddy Jim Gallagher. Um, he was asking how uh, I do these ribbon um, sort of wraparound effects on the designs that I do. Uh, my apologies for the handwriting. I had a hard time writing the word heavy. I have no idea why. So I did it multiple times, so it looks really dumb. <laughs> but basically, the, the idea behind this is to start off light, push down heavy, and then lift back on the brush to end lightly. So you're going to start with a light touch, push down, and lift up. Um, this is something that I learned by watching the Steve Kafka videos. Uh, I will be using his brush as well, the Kafka Scroller number three. So if you want some really good examples of this, go to Steve Kafka's uh, uh, channel. Um, also go to his website if you want to purchase some of his materials. Uh, but I just wanted to give that preface uh, first that I, I did learn these by watching his videos. So it's not something that I developed at all. I'd say 99% of what I do, I did not develop. I'm just trying to learn my own style. And um, that was something that really caught my eye. And it's something that I still use to this day. So let's get started. So I load the brush up uh, pretty well. I don't over reduce because if you over reduce, there's a chance you might pick up on the color from the previous uh, paint. This is still wet and I am working on just sort of cardboard paper it's just the back of a, a thick piece of paper um, you do want to reduce I'd say about the same as if you were gonna do old-school designs so I wouldn't reduce as much as if you were gonna do scrolls because this is gonna be a very short distance so I load the brush and I always no matter what I always sort of manipulate the tip uh, by just knocking off some paint to give me the desired result uh, how I want to start so if I want a nice pointy tip I, I'll make sure to knock off a decent amount of paint and I'm kind of overdoing it here but I'll knock off some paint to make sure I end up with a nice tip so I did that I'm gonna follow these steps I'm gonna start as if this is coming from behind this line it's gonna go over the other ones I'm gonna go out push down go over the other ones and then lift back up. See, it's a little over reduced, so it's watery right there, but it's it's fine. <clears throat> you could always go over it. And this paper's absorbing this paint quite bad, but it's all right. You could always learn to adapt. When it comes to pinstriping, you gotta adapt to the situation. I over reduced it so I'm just letting it dry out and getting a little bit more paint on the brush all right now I'm gonna get ready for the next one you can do these with one load of paint you don't have to re keep loading the paint I just it's just something that I did just then to get my consistency back on track so I don't know if you noticed but I started where this one at the bottom of this one, kind of at the corner of where the where the teardrop shape is, that's where the other one's going. And it's going to run parallel, or as parallel as I can, to the previous one to kind of give that effect, like it's coming back around. And I push down in the middle. If you need to adjust it, you can. Make it thicker in the middle if you want to give yourself thicker ribbons or wraparounds. Right, and so on and so forth. So, light, push down, and go light. Right, that one actually come out a lot nicer. The paint's starting to work with me again. Light, push down, and then lift up, and go light. Light, push down. And then go light and again you can you can you can adjust them to make them a little nicer um, 
<clears throat> but always keep in mind to try to connect them. I see a lot of folks doing um, doing ones where they're, they're, there's a huge gap in between the next one. Let's see if I can move the camera down. I probably should have gave myself some space for those. But I see folks do uh, stuff like this, right? There's one there. And then there's another one here. And then there's another one even further down. In my opinion, those don't look quite as uniform as if, as if you connect them together. So that's just an opinionated statement on what I think looks good. Um, you can always uh, come back through the top and you know give it a nice swooping tail like like the way I, I saw on uh, Kafka's videos where he kind of just gives it a nice tail where it's got a starting point. Um, you can also here, let's pretend like that doesn't exist. You can also just wrap it around as such. And give it a nice ending point like that. I know I kind of made it all look bad, but uh, hopefully that gives you an idea. So you want to start light. Start light. Here, I'm going to show you over here. Start light. Push down. Light. And then do it again, light, push down, connecting to the other one, and then light, light, push down, and then light. It's, uh, it's almost a little bit calligraphy-esque, um, and I don't know if you could see, I'm getting a lot finer lines as this paint starts to dry up, so the consistency of the paint really makes a difference I was way over reduced when I first started so see I'm getting lighter lighter tips lighter beginnings lighter ends so that's how I like to do them um, you know you can you can mess around and have it all go through it you could do a lot of things with it um, I was also going to show that they don't have to be going uh, vertically. You can also do them onto something that's going off to the side. So let me reduce this paint just a little bit. And I'll adjust the camera to focus over there. <clears throat> my apologies on the camera work. I've always done these by myself with my phone. So I've never had any help uh, with videotaping this pinstriping and I can assure you it's a pain in the butt currently I have the phone about ooh I don't know two inches away from my mouth so with these I always like to start uh, if I can on the area that will that will look like it, it can come out the best so uh, if, if I come out this way it almost is already going with that curve I always try to start away from the curve to give me almost the idea of you know the the nice crossing point where if if you know if we were going to cross somewhere we wouldn't cross with this we wouldn't try to cross like that we would want to cross like this right so i would start here and that's where i would start the wrap around these are uh, a nice way to add another color these are a nice way to group some things together if you want to add uh, add color and, and group something that's a little feels a little bit detached. Um, you can use them in old school, uh, although generally they fit better in scroll designs uh, just because of their flowy nature. It's basically an S curve, but it's one with you know some flair to it. So light. Push down and light. And again, the illusion is that it's going behind, starting behind. <clears throat> and another thing that I've been doing, um, hopefully it's focused. Another thing that I do sometimes is I can incorporate the, the endings or beginnings into the design. 
So I, you know, I really don't know exactly how, but you know, you could, you could always turn this into another part of the scroll, right? So now this loop starts wrapping around, and you can make it uh, scroll a different way if you like. It kind of gives it more, more uh, life, in my opinion, and that's something that. Uh, that I started doing now I, I I'll be honest I didn't really haven't seen anybody else doing that so that could have been something uh, I figured out on my own I, I really don't know but using these and continuing with the design elements through these wraparounds it's just something that I you know at some point I was doing a huge scroll uh, design for a guy and I started doing these wraparounds and, and then I what I ended up doing was making a couple of loops and then making new wraparounds, you know, that went along with it. And so if, if I wanted to keep on coming here, um, we could pretend that, let's just pretend that this goes out all the way to here. Uh, you could start doing more wraparounds there to say that's where that's going. So there's there's a lot of different ways you can you can play with these uh, you know almost like vines it can keep going any which way it wants wrapping back around and wrapping but that's how I do them um, again just basically watched Steve Kafka's videos it's, it's how I figured them out um, another little thing that I've been enjoying to do a lot is these little discs so I'll do that here and again a lot of this stuff is to um, the idea is to help group a section so if you have an area where things are kind of together as I built here um, you can use these little doodads to sort of group this section so these are these look like discs almost like uh, somebody called them Jetson discs so what I'll do is um, it's good to have some horizontal grid lines to help keep it uh, symmetrical and not going funny sideways on you. Um, <clears throat> I do have a, a damaged right eye, so any grid lines are, are, are helpful for me. So I, I'll just do like an arch. I'll try to make sure that I've gone the same distance on either side. And sure this is lit up enough and I'll just kind of do a little hook inward and sometimes I'll even th thicken up this corner just to give it more of an illusion that it's bending <clears throat> and then I'll I'll do another smaller one starts right below it and the the arch is going to catch these two right so the arch is going to catch the two open points, kind of. If you need to touch it up, you always can. And I'll just bring those in like that, almost like they're disappearing behind. And you can do those as many times as you want. They don't necessarily have to go lower or smaller. You can do a bigger one. If you if you're so inclined to do so you could do a bigger one next but generally I, I'll, I'll generally make them smaller as I go see and it, and it helps to enclose these ends to give them more of a disc shape so these are just little extras that I like to do um, I don't know where I saw this. I may have seen this somewhere. I'm freaking positive I saw it somewhere. I just don't recall where. And I don't recall if it was in pinstriping or, you know, maybe it was in graffiti work or just general designs. But I always thought it was a cool way to add a little something. Uh, a little bit of a 50s element uh, to the design. So hopefully that helps, Jim. Uh, hopefully, uh, 
hopefully that helps anybody that's wanting to learn uh, how to give some more pizzazz to your scrolls uh, a little bit more pizzazz to your designs um, my apologies for the mess and let me know what you think in the comment section um, at the moment I am uh, recovering from uh, I got a little COVID it wasn't all that bad <laughs> but uh, I don't recommend anybody catch it on purpose so um, thank you all for the support thank you all for helping me hit 10,000 subscribers and have a good day we'll see you on the next video